Welcome back, this is Yamajack, and today we got uh, Gunslinger, BS Old West, Suicidal, and how y'all doing today? I am doing well. I, um... Gotta record three episodes today. I think I'm just gonna record three episodes a day, every day. And just slowly build up a... A very, very big backlog. I don't know, I might stop when it's like... A couple weeks long or something. Um... Just so that I have the confidence that uh, stuff like what's been happening lately won't really be happening anymore. I'll be able to uh, to take a break for a little bit if I have to, or um, not record one day if I have to, or whatever. So I'll just, I'll just record three episodes a day, every day, which is one extra than I have to. And after two weeks, I'll have a week of backlog, you know? It's, it's a solid strategy, and I'm going to employ it. And that should hopefully help eventually. I mean, it's not going to help immediately. So I have to at first have the backlog <laughs> to to fix it, um, <clears throat> but at the very least, we should be no longer having those shorter episodes too too often, starting basically immediately. Now the consistency of the uploads is going to be a little bit like the time that's going to be a little bit mm, farther out, but the uh, the length of them should be more consistent now at least, which will be good. Of course. We'll work on it. We'll get there. We'll get there. It's one step towards happiness and um, productivity and everything else that's good in the world, right? Anyway, I uh, I got caught up to medical return, which was really good. I really liked it. Um. Yeah, definitely highly recommend that. Uh, what was I going to talk about? I'm trying to think of like what I actually talked about in recent episodes, because it's been a couple of days now since I had like a, a proper productive episode. And I know I had like a couple of episodes that I talked about stuff, but it's like, you know, <laughs> they, were, they weren't very good. They weren't very coherent, you know? Um, right, Asupero Kanojo. Uh, I want to talk about that a little bit, because... I have autism, and I, I've talked about my autism for a while. I have Asperger's, which is uh, on the autism spectrum disorder stuff thing, you know. Legally, I'm disabled because of it. Uh, it won't really show much of an effect to uh, to you or, or to my friends or anybody like that, because you don't think about the quirks that I have in the same way, right? Like, you think that I'm being inconsistent and... You know, just just that's it, right? Like, that's that's all there is to it. That's that's why I'm not um, uploading these videos and at the right time and, and getting everything done in the right order and all that kind of stuff. You know, but that's I'm not gonna blame it on my autism necessarily, but it is to a certain extent um, affected by that. But it's not something that you would think about as uh, as being a trait of autism. Um, I'm also a little bit weird, a little bit brash at times, but, you know, you wouldn't really think of that as being autistic, you'd just think that I'm maybe a little bit of a jerk at times, a little bit arrogant, a little bit, um, overbearing, rude. You wouldn't really think it's autism, you'd just think that I'm rude. Um, you'd think that I'm weird, you'd think that I'm strange, but not, you wouldn't, you wouldn't go so far as to think that it's autism, right? You know because I've told you, but if I didn't tell you, you wouldn't notice. And uh, it's just because all the things that you would notice about me that are strange and odd and different, you wouldn't associate with autism. Not because they're not there, but just you wouldn't associate it with autism. And um, it's, it's these traits, these things, that make up me, you know, like who I am and, and uh, how I live my life and, and the, uh, the issues and problems that I face. It's all these little things, because I don't have, you know, I'm, I wouldn't say I'm, I mean, I'm high functioning, but I'm, I'm non-verbal at times too. I, I, I have selective mutism, um, so, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not low functioning for sure. Um, I, I've, I've had a rant about these terms a lot as well, um, just because like, anybody has a bad day, you know, like, 
If, if I'm having a bad day, I'm gonna be about as capable as, uh, as somebody who would otherwise be considered low functioning, despite legally, um, I'm, I'm high functioning. It's just that I have more good days and fewer bad days, but, but my bad days are still just as bad, really. Um, like my really bad days. I have, I have trouble with like motor skills and, and all this kind of stuff, but that's not, you know, like panic attacks and it's just, it's just a whole mess of, of nonsense that, that I have to put up with just because I'm autistic, you know, it's, it's just, it just comes with the, with the territory. Um, and, and those traits, the, the panic attacks, the, um, the nonverbal, um, you know, the being rude to people. And, and being made fun of that stuff is is generally speaking fairly well represented in media the issue is that it's not done right for the most part like if you look at Sheldon Cooper I know I know canonically I don't believe he's actually autistic but um, you know almost anybody is gonna look at Sheldon Cooper and say that he has Asperger's because that's what people think Asperger's is. That's that's what people's perception of it is. Because that's what the media shows. Even though it's not really accurate. Um, you know? Because uh, he's rude and brash. Right? Everybody knows that autistic people are rude and blunt and honest. Um... You know, everybody knows that, right? Uh, <clears throat> he's also... Uh, oh, he's, high, he's very smart. You know, autistic people are always smart in media. We always, uh, we're always like the smartest people around. We're, we're good at math and we have perfect memories and all this. And, uh, let's see, what else is wrong with it? <laughs> um, let's see. Um, trying to think of Sheldon Cooper and what he does. Yeah, that, that, but that's it, I guess. Right? Because I'm thinking, I, I don't think I don't see anything else. And again, he's not canonically autistic, but that's that's what people think of when you talk about autistic people in uh, in in pop culture, right? Is is Sheldon Cooper from The Big Bang Theory? Even though it's confirmed that he's not, and he doesn't actually show like many traits of autism. That, that are like real um, pe people think that that's what it is because he's rude, honest, and smart those are the three things that make up autistic people in, in the general public's eyes the issue is that he doesn't care if he's rude so it's not that he's autistic he's just an asshole like, he, like I'm rude all the time I make mistakes and I, I screw up I don't want to you know, like I want to be nice I want to be kind I want to be helpful and and respectful like that's what I want I'm just bad at it sometimes so and when people raise it to my attention that that I've been rude I'm not like just gonna shut them down and be like well you should be smarter then you should you should be better you know why don't you stop being stupid you know like I'm gonna be like oh I'm so sorry I didn't know that would be offensive I didn't know that that would hurt like I'm, I'm sorry you know I didn't mean that I didn't mean to hurt you I just said what I was thinking um, <laughs> you know, like, some things aren't meant to be said, it's, you know, anyway. Uh, I don't want to be hurtful. Sheldon Cooper doesn't care. He is, he has a, a distinct lack of, of, like, empathy, which isn't necessarily a specific trait of autism. Um, it's, it's more of, you know, psychopathic. Um... What else does he do? Okay, so he's honest, right? But this mostly just ties into him being rude. Right? It, it's not really that he's honest, he's just rude. It, it, it's just him being rude again. And, um... You know, it, it's not really... Safety's off. And, 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 and being honest isn't really a trait of, of autism in the first place anyway. I mean, you know, it kind of is, because... We don't really feel the need to lie, 
You know, if, if you want to know the answer to something, I'll tell you. And if I don't want to tell you, then I'll just tell you that I don't want to tell you. <laughs> it's, I, don't, I don't have to make up a lie. But what good does that do? You know, like, that's that's kind of my perspective of it. And a lot of people with Asperger's share that perspective. But uh, Sheldon Cooper's honesty mostly comes in the form of being honest about things that are rude. Which, again, isn't really, like, what it is. And uh, then he's smart and has, like, a perfect memory, right? And this is another trait that, that people often think of as being autistic. I'm reasonably intelligent, you know? But I'm not, like, a genius. I, uh, you know, we're... Well, I, oftentimes it tries to, to pin, you know, autism or mental illness as being a, a boon to the person afflicted with it, you know? Like, they're autistic, but they're so smart, they're so talented, it's such a, you know, they're, 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 they're so good at this thing, and it's like, no, like, it doesn't really, you know, like, my brain works differently than you, sure. You know, I, I might be good at, at, at some things, or, or more focused on other things or whatever, but I'm not like, you know, just suddenly going to be a genius. I'm not just going to remember everything, you know? And, uh, Asuperu Kanojo went over all of these topics in, in a much much more like just realistic way she was very honest when she was asked questions she would answer them you know like the main character was like you know who's your favorite face or uh the, the main character was asking like am i your favorite face and she's like no you're my second favorite he's like well who's your favorite so she told them that's that's the honesty that is you know that makes up what what being autistic is you might think that that's being rude but that's answering a question you know, it's not just willfully offering up information to that that would hurt somebody. It's, it's somebody asked a question. I'm not going to lie to make you feel better. I'm going to just tell you what the answer is. Don't ask it if you don't want to know. Um, she wants to be a part of things. She wants to be to have friends and have people and have all of these things happening. She just isn't good at it. Um, You know, it, it goes into her, her school life, and she's bullied not for being autistic, not for being, you know, different, but just for being weird, for being rude, because people don't like the things she's saying, you know, because she's honest and, and, and truthful when people ask her questions rather than, you know, what's expected of you, which is to, to lie and say, yes, that shirt does make you look pretty, which is, I'm not saying that, like, that it makes you look ugly. If you didn't want to know that it makes you look ugly, then don't ask if it makes you look ugly. I'm sorry. Um, it had uh, it showed off all the panic attacks you have. Panic attacks are just such such a. I mean, it, it, they get avoided in in so many media representations of any kind of mental illness, even though they're so prevalent and and so so like crucial to to why we are the way we are you know you, you can say that you know, see autism changing my brain and, and the way that I handle things but like honestly a lot of it stems from the motivation to avoid panic attacks you know like like at a certain point in, in, in your life the, the, the panic attacks don't go away okay they, they, they don't what, what goes away is your inability to prevent yourself from being in a situation that would cause it you know you don't learn you don't learn how to like get rid of a panic attack once you have it you don't learn how to prevent a panic attack from happening once you you know feel it other than remove yourself from the situation that's that's your thing you know like you 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 know that it's going to be causing a panic attack so you don't take part in it you know that it's going to be causing problems so you avoid it it's it's that's the strategy <laughs> that 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 exists for 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 panic attacks you know you, you don't have like coping mechanisms and stuff like that right like you do to a certain extent but like for the most part you just you learn to avoid situations that are that are going to cause them you learn to yeah uh, avoid them so that that affects the decisions that I make in a, in a big way. Like I I often talk about it 
on uh, on camera where you know like I want to be able to do this I want to be able to do that but I can't do it all at the same time I have to, to take it a little bit slower that's not because I can't handle it you know it's not because I can't do that that I'm not capable of it because of my autism I could do it it's just that I know that this is going to be a big stressor that this is going to be something that's going to affect my day-to-day -day life in in a big way and it's going to definitely contribute to panic attacks so I'm going to avoid doing it so that that doesn't happen and I'm going to spread it out and, and handle it a little bit safer and that's that's what you learn when you're going to to counseling and therapy and all that is is to be able to do that so it's 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 a huge impact on on how you handle your day-to-day -day life is is these panic attacks and your ability to to avoid them and uh, you know you, you do learn uh, how to handle them um, when you are experiencing them largely it's uh, hope there's somebody nearby or call somebody um, because like you just like you, you just you can't do it if, if you're having a panic attack and you're by yourself you're just gonna suffer like there, there's just no ifs, ands, or buts about that. It's just gonna suck, and you're gonna be terrified, and crying, and probably screaming, and it's it's just it's gonna be just a terrible, terrible, terrible situation to be in. So, you know, and, and that's kind of why you don't really have a way to cope with it when you're having a panic attack by yourself, because you're not in, you're not in a sane mind at all when it's when it's happening. You don't have the ability to. To think, okay, like deep breaths and like do this and do that, and you do to a certain extent, but like a lot of your your mental faculty is gone, you know. Um, it's 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 gone. You're panicked. You're crying. You're you're worried. Everything's just terrible. Everything you do is going wrong. Every everything is just wrong, and it sucks. And the world is coming down, and and it's all just falling apart. And uh, Coping with that <laughs> when when it's happening, it, like good luck. You know, it, it's not really a thing you can do. You, you learn to to avoid them or to uh, to seek help when it's happening. Uh, is is and that's that's my experience with it with many 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 years of counseling and therapy and and uh, professional help. Is that uh, I basically can't do it when when it happens just find somebody to help you um, or suffer for a while so you know a big part of my life is, is avoiding the situations that are going to cause that and there's not too many of them you know to a certain extent as you learn how to handle the situations and as you experience more situations and you understand what they are and all that uh, a lot of the stress just kind of disappear you know like when you're younger you haven't done as much, you know, so when you're going to your first, you know, job, right, your first day at your first job, you've never been to work before, so that's a very stressful situation. Nowadays, when I go to my first day at my first job, I've been to my first day at a job many times. When I go to a, you know, first shift at a job, I'm just like, yeah, it's just a normal day because I've done this before. I understand what's happening. So the, the number of scenarios that, that are going to, to stress you out and, and uh, incite these panic attacks definitely shrink over time as you, uh, as you face situations and, and learn how to overcome them. Um, but like a, a big deal of my life is, is avoiding the situations that are going to cause it, um, which for the most part is like taking on too much at once, you know? Um, it's 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 taking on too much at once. It's going to like a, a really big party. It's going to you know like like just a, a lot of things like that. It's not really too much that really causes me panic attacks these days. Um, definitely working too much does. If I work like 30, 40 hours a week for too long, like I'm out. <laughs> That's it. I I'm I'm done. I, I I'm not gonna show up to work for like two weeks because I'm just gonna be sitting at home crying. Um. So you know like that's that's what it kind of boils down to is, is that these panic attacks have such a huge impact on my life that that like I change the way I live my life based on them you know and then in media they get ignored they just get brushed over like they don't matter and I'm like no it's like such an enormous part of why I am the way I am you know like it's it's huge to, to who I am and, and how I got to where I am 
and uh, it just gets brushed over in as superior counter jump. Definitely didn't. <laughs> it was it was shown full force. There was a lot of um, self harm and uh, uh, they were they were properly handling the situation the way that uh, you more or less should. Um, and uh, they they didn't brush over the the bad parts of it. Uh, she had, and, and you know, she had her the things that she was good at. You know, she was able to be hyper focused on one thing and, and figure something out. You know, uh, her favorite author shared a picture from his veranda, veranda. I don't know, and uh, she was able to figure out the building she lived in, uh, the building the author lived in, based on finding the the like notable locations in the picture and then like triangulating the the place that the picture would have been taken from you know it doesn't sound like much of a talent but that's the kind of thing that most people with aspergers are going to have like that's the kind of talent is is that focus and that uh, that attention to detail um you know because because uh, one one thing that we that happens with people with aspergers is that we like the, the reason we get sensory overload, the reason that uh, we um, have problems with like bright flashing lights and we have problems with loud noises and all this stuff is because we don't have any way of filtering that out. We don't, we don't have any way of ignoring those sounds. We don't have any way of focusing on something else and letting it drown out. Um, because we, we pretty much, unless we're like hyper focused on one thing, it, it's pretty much just everything that's coming in is, is being processed. Like everything, you know? Every feeling, every sound, every light, every, every little thing that we can feel is being processed. Whereas with somebody who doesn't, somebody who's neurotypical perhaps, um, you know, there might be some flashing lights off in the distance and you'd be able to continue doing what you're doing and talking because those flashing lights aren't really that big a deal. You know, you're able to just mostly ignore them, just kind of forget they're there. People with Asperger's, we can't do that, you know? And so, you know, some people like to, to kind of showcase this by making us seem very smart, by making us seem very intelligent or whatever but but the reality is is that we just see things that 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 a lot of people don't see we hear things that a lot of people don't hear you know every, every little thing that's happening in our lives is always being given like pretty much 100 percent attention um and uh so you know when when somebody shows a picture like that a lot of people are going to look at the sunset. They're going to look at, uh, um, you know, the 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 skyline. They're going to look at all of these things that that you know, make a typical picture fairly nice to look at, right? Somebody with autism is probably going to see the buildings, the signs, the uh, you know, like what time of day it is. You know, like those kinds of details are things that somebody with Asperger's or autism in general is probably going to notice more than than somebody who's neurotypical. And uh, you know, and then she was able to to kind of like triangulate it and find it and 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 get on her way. So she was, you know, she was talented and smart, but she wasn't, you know, a genius. We're not just geniuses. You know, you still we still have to study. We still have to like go through the whole process, right? We don't just get to skip everything and be a university professor at seven years old because we have autism. It's, it's just, that doesn't happen. Like, it's not... We're not geniuses. We just pay better attention to things sometimes. Sometimes. Not even all the time. Just just sometimes. Other times, we just ignore it completely because we don't care about it. You know? Um, uh, she had a reliance on the uh, on the on the uh, on the uh, on the male lead a heavy reliance uh, he made her feel safe and uh, she developed a very definite like dependence on him which definitely happens and is uh, is like a 
kind of a big thing in uh, in this kind of stuff with with any kind of um, mental issues is, uh, is developing that dependence on somebody it's not really good it's not healthy um, but it will happen because you know when you go your whole life just with everybody kind of being after you to a certain extent and nobody wanting to include you in things then you find somebody who finally does it, it feels good and uh, you latch on like your life depends on it because to a certain extent it kind of does um, and that X Factor recheck uh, see what else did it do Ah, yeah, she was, um... At one point in time, she kicked a dog. She tripped a child. Uh... She would... She hit people quite often. Um... You know, she was never taught that these things are wrong. So, she doesn't think they're wrong. I mean, it's kind of like a normal thing, but, but it's particularly... Um, noteworthy. With, uh, with people with Asperger's or, or, or other um, developmental disorders or whatever it is. Uh, so it was just just all around. The, the Asperger Kanojo was just, it was just it was one of the best manga I've ever read. And definitely the best like autistic representation I've, I've ever seen in, in any media. It was, it was just incredible how it... Because again, like so many you know people writing autistic characters in media brush over all the bad stuff and I get it you know I get it there's definitely a, a semblance of it's not very fun to watch somebody break down and have a, a panic attack it's not very fun to watch somebody get bullied and, and have a whole bunch of thoughts in their mind that, that they want to say but they just can't bring themselves to say it's not very fun to watch you know, a child be abused and, and uh, humiliated. It's not fun. It's, it's not it's not something that's necessarily going to sell well. It's not going to appeal to the general public. I get it. You know? But, uh... At the same time, it's not accurate if you don't put that in. Like, that's what autism is. You know? Like, it's it's who we are. For the most part. You know, I, I don't think there's very many people with Asperger's out there who uh, haven't experienced panic attacks, who haven't experienced, you know, doing something that they thought was, like, being nice and, and everybody's getting on them for, like, wow, why would you do that? Like, that's so rude. Like, that's so disrespectful. Why would you do that? You know, like, I, I don't think there's many people with Asperger's that haven't experienced that at least once in their life. And, uh... And... You know, even even then, like when media shows this kind of thing, um, you know, when when media shows that 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 you know some autistic person was rude, oftentimes the autistic person is like the butt of the joke, right? Like the the the, the punchline is that autistic person was rude and didn't know they were being rude. Like that's the punchline. It's a joke. It's it's a bit, you know, when when that's my life. You know what I mean? And, uh... They, they don't show the, like, internal conflict that kind of spawns because of it when, when somebody's like, Hey, you're rude! And you're like, oh my god, I, I can't believe I did that, I'm so sorry, like... And, and you know, even sometimes you, you'll be thinking all these things, but you won't be able to say it because you're just, like... Not able to talk. Like, it's, you're just overwhelmed. You can't, you can't say what you're thinking. And, you know, you, you've got this sort of internal monologue about how bad you feel and, and how you had no idea that it would be hurtful and you were just trying to be nice and like you know, all this but you can't figure out the way to say it that's not gonna just also be terribly rude and, and, and hurt somebody again oh my god I can't you can't walk you can't walk down there dude and, and that kind of stuff isn't shown that kind of fear and anxiety that comes from it isn't shown it's just ignored, and I'm like, but that's, like, important to, to what it is to, to be autistic, you know? Like, that's crucial. But it's not shown. And and then in Aspero Kanojo it was, is, is the 
moral of the story here. And that's why I love it so much, because they, they showed it all. Every, every little tiny detail about, you know, my life and, like, how this all affects me. It's all just there, you know? And it, it, it's, it's just, it's really, really unbelievably cool to see it written so well. And in one of my favorite forms of media, too. It's, uh, it, it was really, really cool. I really loved it. I, I could talk for so long about uh, how much I loved it. But uh, I'll, I'll, I'll spare you the, <laughs> the, the time on that. The moral of the story is that it like genuinely, sincerely, if, uh, if you are, are interested in, in what living with autism is like, it, it, like Asupero Kanajo is like one of the greatest resources I, I could ever recommend to somebody to like see all of what what makes it bad and and I, I think I mentioned it in a previous episode but like you know once you get therapy and counseling like a lot of that stuff gets better you learn how to deal with these problems you learn how to, to overcome them you you learn how to get better and and uh, and kind of blend in but uh, before therapy, before counseling, like, bruh, <laughs> it's exactly what life is like. And even even after therapy, it's not like therapy and counseling just like fixes it, you know? Like, I'm not just fixed. I'm still autistic. I still have panic attacks. I still have anxiety and 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 troubles and all that. I just it does, it's not as as disturbing. You know, again, I've I've learned how to avoid the problems that. Uh, or uh, avoid the situations that would uh, that would cause major problems because I just I can't I can't do too much you know anyway that's gonna do it for today thanks for watching like the video if you like it subscribe to see more in the future comment if you have anything to say I'll see you next time bye bye.